Mike Radich here, and I'm now joining the phone by Lion Fight Super Lightweight Gaston Bolanos. Gaston, how are you? Hey, Mike, how are you? I'm good. Happy to be here. Gaston, we usually do this segment at the end of the interview, but I thought we'd change it up a little bit and have some fun and do this segment for the entire interview. The name of the segment is called Really Random. That's where I ask you a random question and you give me the real answer. Some of these questions are custom made just for you and some of these questions are generic ones that I ask all the people I interview. So here's the first question. Superpower you'd love to have. Superpower, I'll look to fly. Favorite movie? Hmm, favorite movie, that's a good one. I don't think I have a favorite movie, to be honest. I really enjoy films. I can sometimes watch the same movie over and over and over uh, if I really like it, but I don't really have a favorite movie. Okay, how about this one? Movie you've seen the most times? Movie I have seen the most times. Mm. Finding Nemo. <laughs> Favorite color? Favorite color? Blue. Favorite guilty pleasure? I don't know. It's a tough one, man. I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that one. Can we go on the next one? Okay. Gaston, you got a fight coming up this Friday night at Lion Fight 27. Since it is fight week, what's your schedule like from now until the fight? Uh, I'm going to keep working out a little bit. I, I like to work out. Right, right around Wednesday and then uh, start, you know, tapering off and just relaxing. Uh, but my schedule is going to be pretty much the same. Um, just some massages here and there until then. And, uh, but yeah, still, still training because I, I, I like to train and run and just keep, keep the same schedule until, until about the middle of the week. And then I'll, I'll be traveling down and then be weighing in. And Friday night I'll be putting on a show for everybody. This fight is going to be taking place at Pachanga. How far away do you live from the venue? Uh, driving is about eight hours. Uh, flying is only hour twenty five minutes from San Diego, and then one hour driving to Pachanga from San Diego. How many people do you have coming to the fight? How many people are making the drive down there? Friends, family, people like that. How many people are coming to support you? I have some family going down. I have uh, a lot of people from uh, CSA Gen. Also making the trip, some flying, some driving. Uh, I have a lot of people, yeah, going to support me. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm truly blessed to have so many, so many supporters and, and fans uh, following me through my career. You were born in Peru. How old were you when you moved to the U.S.? I was 13 years old when I when I moved. When did you start doing Muay Thai? When I was 10. Since moving to the U.S., have you been training at CSA since day one, or did you start off somewhere else and then eventually you moved over to CSA? When did you start training there? I started back at Soy Mountain Dew. Then uh, Kirian, who is my coach now, uh, was, go- uh, was going to Soy Tech Mountain Dew. He was teaching a few classes, also taking a few classes. And then 2008, uh, he was a coach for the U.S. National Muay Thai team for the ASMA World Championships. And I said I was pretty much connected and then moved been together ever since. About eight years now, mm-hmm. together. How do you say your opponent's name for Friday's fight? How do I, his, his, his name is Crumpet. Obviously, he has a lot more experience than you do. This is going to be only your eighth fight, and he has close to 100 fights. So obviously, he has a very big experience advantage over you, but... Competition-wise, how do you view him? Do you view him as the appropriate step in your career? Do you view him as a lateral step, even though he has a lot more experience? Or do you view him as a big step up in competition? Competition-wise, how do you view him? Well, obviously he's got a lot more experience than me. And uh, I think everybody knows that he's had a lot more fights. He's been in the game a lot longer than I have. Uh, But this is a fight that I wanted. I asked for this fight. And I'm really excited to step up in competition. Uh, even though it's only my eighth fight, as you mentioned, I'm I'm really I'm really happy uh, to be doing this fight and to be truly be able to challenge myself and go you know and go against such a tough opponent. I got nothing but uh, respect towards him. I know why you've taken this fight, but let me play devil's advocate for a second. There's a lot of people who would say you're undefeated right now. Just 
try to build up your record, take some more fights, maybe five or six more fights, get five or six more wins, keep the undefeated streak going, and then take the step up in competition that you're taking on Friday night. Some people would say, just wait a little. Don't rush it right now. You, you've got plenty of time. Just just take the fight a little bit later. Don't do it right now. Why exactly have you decided against that, and why are you taking this fight against a guy who has a lot more experience than you? Why is right now the time for you to take a fight like this? Well, I'm, I'm here to test myself, and I, I won my last seven fights by knockout. Uh, I want, I'm, 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 I'm here for a challenge. I'm, I'm here to improve. I want to get better as a fighter. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't really care about my record. I don't really care about protecting that. It doesn't, that doesn't really matter to me. To me, it's all about getting better and challenging myself every single day and getting better every single day. And the only way I might be able to do that is by taking on better opponents who have done that many more fights than me. That's the only way I'm going to accomplish my goals in Muay Thai. Is it by taking on big names and people who have a lot more experience than me? Celebrity people say you look like. Uh, I never really had somebody tell me, "Oh, you look like so and so." I don't know. I I never had I never never had somebody say that looked like some celebrity. What motivates you in life and in fighting? In life and in fighting, uh, to me, it's just about like I said before. It's, it's about getting better and just being the best that I can possibly be. And using all the talent that, or you know, all the talent and drive that God has given me uh, to get better, and use, just using that to get better, and inspiring people to go out there and follow their dreams. That's that's what drives me in life and, and fighting. Besides fighting, what are you passionate about? Uh, I like to surf. I like going to the beach. Uh, that's that was one of the first things that I learned to do when when I was a little kid. I, I've been surfing since I was about three years old. I used to do it with my dad and uh, my friends back in Peru. That's one of the things that I love doing the most uh, besides training. But uh, since I've been, I, I now I live in Melbourne. It's a little bit far for me to go surfing, but I still between camps I do once in a while. Favorite food. Favorite food, Peruvian food. Least favorite food. I don't really have a, a least favorite food. Um, I, the one thing that I cannot stand is olives and raisins. But besides that, I'm 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 pretty open to pretty much everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> favorite restaurant. Favorite restaurant. My grandma's house. Do you have any pre-fight rituals or superstitions? Well, you know, I, I do believe in doing the white crew and not uh, stealing the rank, but ties do. Uh, that's definitely something that I, I always do. Uh, my my only, I wouldn't call it a superstition, but I would say that the one thing that I always make sure that I do is I, I try to control everything that I can control. If I can, I, I can, you know, I can control my training and I can control doing all these things before the fight. I'm going to do everything that I can control. Because anything that I can't control is going to be out of my hands. Mm-hmm. You know, my you know, I might be sick that day, or whatever. But training wise, I'm always going to be 100. percent Do you have any post-fight rituals? You know, I always uh, hug my coach and cry for whatever reason, whether I win or lose. It's one, it, it always happens. But you know, whether it was my best knockout so far, or you know, a loss back in my amateur career, I always hug my coach and cry. So. I don't know if I'll, I'll call that a ritual, but it always happens. Go to song when you're singing in the shower. I don't sing in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. If you could stay one age forever, how old would you stay? Twenty one. Had a, a lot of fun at twenty one. Twenty one, I would say. If you could trade places with anyone in the world for a week, who would you trade places with, and why? Uh. I don't think I would trade places with anybody. I I love I love the the life I live, and I when you're out there living your dreams every day and doing what you love to do, there's no reason to trade places with anybody. Favorite band and or solo artist? Um, uh, I really like um, there's a DJ account because I I like house music. That's like one of my favorite things. 
The name is uh, Dioro. That's one of my favorite DJs out there. You were doing some training in Thailand. How many times have you been to Thailand, and what was it like training there? This was my second time in Thailand. Uh, first time I went, I went for FMA World Championships in 2009 uh, in Bangkok. Uh, this time it was different. You know, it was, I was going out there to prepare for this fight. I was there for roughly a month. Uh, and to be able to train with the Thais every day, uh, morning and the afternoon, was a great experience for me. It was something that I truly needed. Uh, I chose to get away from the holidays. Uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, I was training every day. Uh, I only had Sundays off, which is great. So it, it, was, it was a good experience for me. It, that's, that's what I can say about that. Are you a full-time fighter, or do you work a second job? Uh, I, was, I, I, I do have a, a part-time job at a dealership. I buy cars for them. Uh, but for now, for the past few months, I've been just training. Uh, especially because I've been so busy uh, with fights. I know you said surfing a little bit earlier, but besides surfing, what are your other hobbies? Uh, I like to DJ. I have a little like uh, DJ set at my house, so I like sometimes I like to mix some music here and there. Uh, but yeah, that and surfing is my my two favorite things. But besides that, I'm pretty much always at the gym training. Favorite social media platform? Instagram. Website you visit most often? I don't know. I haven't really been much in the computer lately. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in Thailand and I was just trying to train and recover from anything. I wasn't really in the computer much. Piece of technology you can't live without? My phone. (laughs) How did you get your nickname, The Dream Killer? Uh, The Dream Killer. Well, it was started back at the gym. Uh, I started the the we we'll had few guys, you know, come through and spar with us, and then I will, they, they'll always be excited to spar and stuff like that, and they'll always try to go hard. And I was always I was like sixteen, seventeen years old, and I was just kind of like kill their dreams, you know. <laughs> it it was just kind of like demoralize them. So uh, my coach came up with a dream killer, and it kind of caught on. You're known for your spinning back elbow. Is that your favorite striking technique? I want to say it's my favorite striking technique. It's the one that I happen to pull off the most. I do practice it a lot in training. Uh, my coach and I uh, do practice a lot and do, do it a lot in the pat work, do it a lot in the bag as well. It's, it's not necessarily my favorite thing to do. I do think that I have a lot of tools uh, and another web, other weapons that I'm going to be showing a lot this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and show that I'm more, more, more of di- a more dynamic fighter than just throwing the spin back elbows. Dan Henderson calls his right hand the H bomb. Does your spinning back elbow have a name? A lot of people haven't called him the elbow. No. Oh. <laughs> See, I like so. I like the Elbolanos. I like that better. The Elbolanos. <laughs> that's that's good. That's pretty good. I yeah, like that. I like that. I think we should call it that. The yeah, yeah, the Albolanos. Maybe it'll catch on. I like that. I came up with it last night. Pretty good. When did you first start throwing that? It started back uh, years ago, back at when I was just an amateur. And we started throwing and it started landing and then just types in more and more. And there's been tons of fights back in my amateur career that I finished uh, with the spinning back elbow, but... I also use other elbows, and I have, I have a pretty mean right elbow as well, so it's not just that. Do you use this when you're in training, using this in sparring? Because uh, it's very lethal. You're you're messing guys up left and right. Are you using this on people in your no, gym, or do no, you use I, it? I don't really. I mean, I I might, like, spin, but I, I don't I always pull the elbow. I never fully let go of the elbow push. I always wear elbow pads, but I, know, I never fully let it go in sparring. You know, I... I love the people I train with, and yeah. I will never. We, you know, we always work with each other. We never try to kill anybody. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's good. That's good. Because I was, I was nervous about that because this is this is some weapon you got there. That's it's. I, I, Thank you. Everyone says that John Jones, his spinning back elbow, I don't know if you saw it or not, but he had a spinning back elbow against Stefan Bonner, and everyone says that's a great spinning back elbow. But I've seen a bunch of yours, and that 
back elbow that John Jones had is nothing compared to yours. Yours is yours is a serious weapon. Well, I, I I think I've been doing it longer than John Jones. I'm sure you have been doing it a lot longer. It's just that he's that seems to be the one when people think of that technique in MMA. He's he's the first guy that people think of. But your spinning back elbow, God, that's some very very deadly that that thing there. Do you get nervous before you fight? A little bit of nerves, definitely. Uh, I think everybody gets nervous a little bit, but uh, I mean, it, you know, it comes. It becomes more natural the more you fight. I have about almost thirty amateur fights. Uh, this is my eighth pro fight, so I've like almost forty or forty fights. I, I don't know. I, I've lost count, but I mean, it, it it's pretty natural now. Uh, but yeah, there's always a little bit of nerves there. Mm-hmm. Always, I think. I think with everybody. Have you ever lost a fight? I have. I lost three fights back in my amateur career. Oh, I couldn't find any record for your amateur career, so I was just curious about that. Have all your amateur fights been under Muay Thai rules? I know you have some MMA fights, but the stand-up fights that you've had, have they all been Muay Thai rules, or have they been modified rules or K-1 rules? What kind of fights have you had during your amateur days? A few of them in, in big, well, you know, like, rules have changed in California. Sure. A lot, you know, before they didn't allow you to use elbows, so that wouldn't really be Muay Thai. Muay Thai is when you have, when you can throw elbows. So a few of them were, I guess you can say, kind, kind of like kickboxing rules, but not really. I mean, most of them have clinch. I mean, it, just the rules vary um, here. Um, and then a couple of them were MMA fights, so I have had a couple of MMA fights. If you weren't a pro fighter, what would your job be? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know what I would be doing. This is I've been doing this since I was so young. Uh, this is all I know. This is this is my passion. This is what drives me every day. This is why I wake up with a smile every day on my face. So I don't know what I'd be doing if it wasn't uh, for Muay Thai and for martial arts. So, what's your goal for 2016? Uh, just to fight as much as I can. That's that's the goal. Okay. Fight as much as I can. Uh, we're gonna. You're probably gonna win some. You're probably gonna lose some. Who knows? Just trying to fight as much as I can and get a, get better. Okay. Every fight. What's your porn star name? If you combine your childhood pet with the street you grew up on, what's your porn star name? Um, you gotta think about that. What's my my first pet? What's your rapper name? If you combine your favorite cartoon character with your nickname, what would your rapper name be? Mm, Goku will be my from Dragon Ball Z, the Dream Killer. <laughs> Goku, the Dream Killer. You might want to trademark that. Somebody might take that. <laughs> That's a good one. What's your favorite TV show? It can be a show currently on the air or a show no longer on the air. Just overall favorite TV show. I've had a lot of good TV shows that like I, I was a, uh, I loved Scrubs when it was on. I feel like all my all the TV shows that I watch are over. Like I don't really have one that I'm following right now. I like Scrubs a lot. How I Met Your Mother, uh, Power. I like Empire right now. That's probably my one of my favorite ones right now. What's your pet peeve? Uh, pet peeve. I have a few. The worst, my worst pet peeve would be, you know, like when hand wraps are all like tangled like that, you know, like I, I hate that. That's one thing that I truly hate. I always got to see them, you know, all wrapped up a little bit, you know, it drives me crazy. Now, let's say you found a magic lamp and you rubbed that magic lamp and a genie appeared and the genie said he was going to grant you three wishes. What would those three wishes be? Oh, you have some good questions today, man. Jeez. Making me, you're making me think for these. You know, I, you know, one of them will be to end poverty. I, I did a couple of trips, you know, around the world this year, and uh, some of the things that I, you know, that I, I went to Indonesia earlier this year, and just the way people live over there, it's, it's crazy. You know, they, they have truly nothing, and they're so happy. So one, one of them will be to end, you know, extreme poverty. Uh, another one. 
be um, probably a house for all my family. Just good house for everybody, for all my family. And third one would be for Muay Thai to be as popular or more popular than MMA. What's the best thing that ever happened to you? Best thing that ever happened to me. Can I pick like two? Sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I'm uh, first one best. You know, my girlfriend is one of them for sure. And the second one would be uh, meeting Carrie uh, and everyone at Combat Sports Academy. You know, they they've become my family over the last few years, and I'm truly blessed to have them in my life. What's the worst thing that ever happened to you? Worst thing that ever happened to me. I don't really have a, like a, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of, of bad things out there, and I don't think any of those have really happened to me. Maybe my, my grandpa passing last year was one of the worst things that happened to me. Time period you'd like to go back and visit, and why? I would love to go, like, to the golden era of Muay Thai, like 1950s, and just some great wars back then. Uh, so I would love to be in Thailand and see what that was like, you know. That would be awesome. Person you look up to the most? Uh, I look up to my coach a lot, and uh, I look up to Kevin Kevin Ross a lot, too. Uh, they're, they're two of my two biggest inspirations out there. Who's going to be cornering you for the fight? Both of them, actually. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not a bad corner. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Number one thing on your bucket list? I would love to like move out somewhere in the world, like just leave everything behind and move somewhere for like a few months. I would love to do something like that and just completely like experience a different culture. I would love to do something like that. Some people are afraid of the dark. Some people are afraid of heights. Some people are afraid of spiders. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid of spiders. Terrified spiders. What do you worry about? What's something that keeps you up at night? Nothing right now, really. I'm just, you know, like I said, I just want to, you know, it doesn't keep me up at night, but I always think about, you know, what I'm, what I'm going to do the next day and how, how I'm going to get better and how I'm, you know, just focusing about getting better and doing something that will help me get, you know, to the next step that I want to get. Not really, you know, like something that worries me, but something that I am focused on. Mm-hmm. You can say. Best advice you were ever given through life and best advice you were ever given through fighting and who gave it to you? Uh, my coach, you know. He, he told me to, you know, not worry about winning and not worry about losing and not worry about your record and just worry about fighting and getting better. And I've truly taken that into, you know, I, I've obviously taken that very seriously. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, it's, Something that you know that I, I think about it all the time, just trying to get better. Also, right in the in that book, the Fighter's Mind, you know, just like the the anxiety of performance and winning is, you know, it can truly kill the way that you're going to perform if you worry about it too much. It's like performance anxiety. So, just trying to get away from that and just being happy and training as hard as I can and just having fun while I'm in there and really enjoying the moment. What's your hidden talent? Hidden talent? Uh, I don't know if it's hidden, but I, I, I can consider myself very athletic. Like, if I do something and somebody shows me, like, I can do it right away and catch on to it right away. If you could go on a $1 million shopping spree at any store, what store would you go on that shopping spree at? Probably some car store and buy some go to town with some cars or something. Okay. I love cars. I'm a huge car car guy, so what are you driving around now? Oh uh, right now I'm I'm just borrowing a car from a friend. You know? oh. My dream car would yeah. be like an either a, a Porsche uh what do you call what is that one? The spider? The nine one eight is like a, almost a million dollars. That's one of like my favorite cars. Oh uh, the Audi R A V ten plus. Uh, those are some Good cars. I know most people out there say Ferraris, and so like I'm not a huge Ferrari guy, but I love that uh, 918 Spider. If you could change one thing about the world, what would you change, and why? One thing about the world, just a lot of hate out there. Um, that's one thing that I would change. There's just a lot of hate. I feel like people need to be a little more uh, loving and caring than they are towards other human beings. So that's, that's a 
call it what I would change. Prediction for the fight on Friday? A war. A five round war. That's what I expect. That's, that's what I'm expecting. I, that's, I think, what the crowd should expect. I worked really hard for this. And I'm really excited uh, for people to see, you know, who I've become during this camp. So I, I'm excited, and I, I think it's going to be a five rounder for sure. Gaston, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank? And is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Uh, my sponsors Action Pro Gear, Muay Thai Addict, Out of the Cave, uh, Nitro Shop in Dublin. Um, I think that's it for sponsors. Uh, and then to all the fans just and my team, thank you for all your guys' support. I couldn't do this without you guys. Uh, you, know, you guys are what drive me every day to you know wake up and train as hard as I can every day. So thank you for all your support. And, you know. Just hopefully big things come, some big things coming this year. Gaston, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. And best of luck coming up on Friday night at Lion Fight 27. Thank you very much.